So uh, next up is uh, Jake Hirsch Allen from LinkedIn. And Jake's challenge I'm giving him is how can open badges work better with LinkedIn like they used to? All right, thank you. Um, how do I pull up my deck? It's okay, I'll let you do that. Yeah, okay. um, so this is gonna be really hard. Uh, this is probably the hardest presentation I've ever given, and I've given three this week. So uh, I was sitting on a flight next to Don uh, to Winnipeg where I spoke on a panel with Noah, and I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but Noah and I are weirdly similar. Like, we look similar, we have the same backgrounds, we do similar things, but anyways, Don can definitely wrestle me off the stage is what I learned from sitting next to him on that flight, and uh, I don't think I can get through all of this in five minutes, so he might have to but I'll do my best. And uh, at a high level, what I want to talk about today is how we can all work more together, i.e. how the big, massive, multinational Microsoft LinkedIn that I work for, and that is probably the de facto standard for recognition of experience, work experience at least online right now, can work better with a community that I honestly feel a part of, you all. Um, this, is, this is my family, much more so than, to be blunt, LinkedIn is. And uh, that also means that I'm speaking as Jake, not as LinkedIn. I don't think I can say there's Chatham House rules or this is confidential or whatever. It's just me, not LinkedIn. But I'm, that also hopefully will allow me to speak more openly. Um, so these are sort of the broad things that I want to cover in four minutes and 11 seconds. And uh, I think most people in the room actually know who I am. So I'm not going to talk a lot about uh, my background. Uh, but there was a few aspects that I thought were particularly relevant to, to why it is that I'm so conflicted up here. Uh, I started my career as a lawyer, and I was defending war criminals in The Hague and Cambodia, sort of evaluating human rights issues at the Supreme Court of Israel. And in those roles, I often was working with villains, like literal international villains. And right now, I feel like the villain. <laughs> uh, so it's sort of a weird reversal, particularly because right now I think I'm doing the work that I'm most proud of in my entire career. But it's hard to balance that with some of the challenges around neoliberalism, around public-private partnerships that uh, I face every day. And so part of my challenge for you all is, how do I balance those things? How do I work within, as an entrepreneur, a massive multinational, and still keep true to my sort of more socialist or more open or more flexible values? Um, you can see I have sort of a background in higher ed. I still teach at Mac. I founded Lighthouse Labs, arguably uh, Canada's uh, largest software development boot camp. And uh, I now work at LinkedIn. But the other thing that I think is relevant to this conversation is having worked on something called the Global Education Platform with Gordon Brown, I spent a lot of time thinking about how online learning in particular can work for disadvantaged communities. And I think one of the key missing links in that conversation is this conversation, which is to say recognition, badging, et cetera. UNHCR is doing some really interesting work in this respect. Um, and a lot of the work that I do that relates to newcomers, individuals with disabilities, uh, the employment services community writ large, which I'll get to in a second, is tied to, to those interests. So I'm now already a minute late. Um, most of you know what LinkedIn is. You know we have a lot of data. And so again, I'm going to skip through our economic graph, which is sort of the network map that comes from all that data. But the challenge around this is, how do we work together on taking this data and making it work for the people who need it most, not the 1% that is actually controlling most of it, but rather the rest of Canada's population and the world's population. And I actually interestingly think that interconnections, like technological ones, APIs, but also communities like this and recognition more generally, is one of the ways that you can actually take that data and make it more accessible or more useful for a much larger variety of people. Now, there's a woman named Yuta Trevorasin who's based at uh, OCAD here, who works on accessibility in a really sort of broad sense of inclusiveness. And she thinks of um, small, thick data. So the kinds of things on LinkedIn that you can perceive about a person from how they wrote their summary, uh, whether maybe they have a disability or whether they are disadvantaged just from the words in their summary and that a human could never perceive. You need a computer, you need AI, uh, and, and massive data sets in order to understand uh, those implications. I think those are really, really interesting ideas for accessibility so that we can make sure we're not leaving anybody out. And so that's the kind of challenge that I wanted to raise around our data. Now I'm going to bring it back to sort of what we're all working on. Most of you know that uh, I spent a couple of years trying to get access for lynda.com to 
uh, Ontario's colleges and universities by negotiating with the government of Ontario, which did eventually pay for it. Now I'm spending most of my time working with the federal government because uh, I think the success of that project was that the college and the university ecosystem began to work better together on a number of uh, areas that relate to the big company that I work for. Um, but we realized we left out probably the most important group of people who need skills, who need recognition, who need job matching, et cetera, which is to say the beneficiaries of employment services. And so now I'm spending most of my time focusing on how to get the employment service community, uh, again, individuals who are newcomers, uh, individuals on EI, any other social service, we want all of them to have access to LinkedIn Learning, the evolution of lynda.com, and to our job matching technology, which basically only people with the $300 a year to pay for it otherwise would get, um, paid for by the federal government. So that's my current big project, and so a challenge there is how can we work together on that? Um, and then, oh, I'm out of time, <laughs> you're cutting me off? All right, uh, the, the thing that sort of is behind all of this actually jumps all the way back to the beginning of my career in law, and that is how do we undertake these projects with dignity? How can I, as sort of a representative of a big multinational, also work with you all in a way that keeps the people in our society that need the most help at the front and center of these conversations because I think recognition and badging and LinkedIn all have a role to play there, but quite frequently we get into the weeds and just focus on the badge or on LinkedIn's data or on LinkedIn's learning software and miss the people behind it. And so what I wanna do is spend most of my career focusing on those people uh, while having an impact at this sort of macro level. A challenge for your 45 minutes? <laughs> um, if I were to take all of that and crystallize it into one challenge, I think it, it really is how can you help me make LinkedIn better um, by having it play nicer with the open badging community? Thank you. Great. Good job.